It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for joining me on this edition of News Desk. We are live around the world via myjoyonline.com, on DSTV, Go TV, and also on your digital televisions because we are free to air. Let's start off with some politics. This is your election headquarters, and former president John Mahama says the clergy and civil society organizations should partly be blamed for the country's economic woes. He believes these groups have failed to criticize government for its profligate spending of loans contracted. He's been speaking at the Techiman Timber Market as part of his two-day tour of the Bono East region. Here's Nanai Aljima's report. According to the former president, loans contracted by the NPP government, which he pegs at $3 billion annually, were not invested in productive ventures. He says the watchdog rule of various actors were left to the NDC alone. Akoya said, "Mpenyu for Omo Mudi Ekai, Asafopenyi, Imam for Ni Adiade, Omo Mwase Omo Kan Nukre Etre Omo Amushe Omaino So." The clergy, civil society, and others in authority reneged on their watchdog rule. From 2018, all vigilant people noticed the economy continued to dip. The economic crisis was imminent. Only the NDC told the president that his brother, who serves as finance minister, has refused to use the $3 billion loans contracted every year judiciously. Now, Obi Anka is a man Bobo Sia. But what Bobo Sia? What is he can do? For here, I did teach you Japadia. I bet some bo ama omaino. To the NDC. See, the ruling government has admitted its inability to put the country on the right track. Now, we have President Ankasa Ibusa. No, say Yesika Semse ni ase esiafa no obe yehunde. The president himself, in response to questions on the economy, admitted it would take the next president to fix the country. He has lost hope himself. We know that the John Muhammad administration is the government to fix the challenge. And President John Dramani Mahama. The Building Ghana Tour made a stop at Techiman Magazine, where a town hall meeting was organized to seek the concerns of the public for the NDC manifesto for 2024. <laughs> A national apprenticeship program campaign policy was preferred as a solution to challenges of apprenticeship raised in the meeting. Skills training is one of the means of reviving the economy. Even graduates will have to learn a skill. Even if you want to travel abroad, it is easier to get a job as a skilled person. No matter your qualification, you should learn a skill. Then we have a national apprenticeship program. Now we are saying that you are at Benkrum in the Kentampo North constituency, a donation was made to victims of the recent floods in the area. The former president called on government to resource the National Disaster Management Organization for such purpose. <laughs> When we were in government, we released funds for the NADMO promptly for disaster management. But this time when the floods happened, NADMO told us they haven't received funding for the last two years. I will plead with government to fund NADMO to support disaster victims.
Well, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Balmir has criticized former President John Mahama for what he says are empty promises to Ghanaians in the former president's quest to return to power. Dr. Balmir contends that the former president lacks thorough understanding of his own policies, particularly the 24-hour economy, economy initiative. Samuel Imbura reports. The vice president was warmly welcomed by enthusiastic party supporters during his homecoming tour in his native region, Northeast. His visit included a courtesy call on the overlord of the Mamprugu Kingdom in Nalirugu, followed by a grand rally in Tamale, the northern regional capital. Notable party figures, including the MPP national chairman, majority leader, and the entire northern MPP MPs caucus, joined him. Dr. Baumia addressed the supporters, expressed surprise at the campaign messages of NDC flag John Mahama. John Mahama. He's going around the whole country and promising everything to everybody. It is as if he has never been president in this country before. Hello, it is as if he has never been president. It is as if he has just landed from Mars. He particularly criticized his understanding of the 24-hour economy policy. Today, because of digitalization, the banks, you can transfer money 24 hours. You can receive money 24 hours. Isn't it? So, he doesn't understand his own policy. It does not make sense. And why won't you to move in 2024 to Dr. Mahmoud Baumia? I will bring a new vision. I will bring new policies. And we will transform this country. John Mahama is the past. While highlighting his own achievements as vice president, Dr. Baumia challenged Mahama to present a single idea from his tenure as vice president. What idea? Did he bring as vice president? He did not bring even one idea to the table. And I challenge anybody to tell us one idea that Dr. Mohammed brought. Dr. Baumia has brought idea after idea after idea after idea. Majority leader Oseche Mensabonsu asserted that Dr. Baumia is pivotal to reshaping the economy. A reason all of them are supporting him. Uh, we have tremendous belief that with him, this country will experience a turnaround. He is the one with the key. He is the one with the key to reposition this country. And that's why all of us are following him. Minister for Lands and Natural Resources and MP for Damango, Samo Abu Jinapo, also emphasized that Dr. Baumia's selection to lead the MPP is based on his integrity, not because he is an ordinary. I represent him not because he's an ordinary, not because he's a Mamprugu, not because he's the great son of Nadewa, not because of that, not just because of that, but because he has shown that he's a competent ordinary, he's a hard-working ordinary, The Vice President's homecoming tour will extend to Yendi, Bimbila, and Damango in the Savannah region later in the day. Samuel Mbura, Joy News, Tamale. So you've had uh, our reporters on ground with these two flag bearers of the governing New Patriotic Party and the opposition. Thank you.
The Vice President, who is the flag bearer of the FCC, is currently with the Sarai team, a participant. Sorry, Samuel. Um, hello, Samuel, if you can hear me, it's very difficult to hear what you're saying. Your voice is being drowned. Um, I, I, I perceive there's a ceremony happening as you're speaking to us. If you can find a much uh, more quieter place so that we can hear uh, what you're saying. While we try and work on Samuel Mbure's line, you've heard from these two flag bearers. We heard from former President Mahama, uh, who is saying that, well, uh, not politicians must not be the only ones blamed for the country's economic woes. He's, he's blaming religious leaders and some others. And then we've heard from Dr. Balmia, who says that the former president has no message and doesn't even understand that his own policies that he's touting as part of his campaign. Let's get some analysis on this. Uh, political scientist Dr. Kwame Asasante joins us for more. It's a pleasure to have you here, uh, Doc. If first of your impressions, we've already um, hit the ground running. These two individuals have started their campaign in earnest. They call it Thank You Talk but we all know all what is geared at um, achieving. Your quick impressions of uh, the political activities we are seeing from these two currently. I think that uh, as you and I have uh, observed, the campaign has just started and uh, they are gearing up, they are getting the basis uh, on white and making sure uh, that uh, they, they ginger everybody uh, for whatever they have for us. Uh, we look forward to a campaign that is devoid of uh, rancor, bickering, uh, violence. We want to have issue-driven campaign so that we can interrogate the issue and then decide which of them is worth our leader. So for me, uh, so far, uh, it is early days yet, but I hope uh, that uh, we'll be able to organize the decent campaign and then it will be issue-based. And, and so far, are you impressed with the messages we are hearing from these uh, two political uh, politicians? Are you hearing the issue-based conversations you're hoping to hear? Uh, you are getting bits and pieces, but I will pardon them in the sense that the campaign has not fully started. Mm. So I'm sure... For now, what we are doing is to get uh, all the act together and then launch the campaign in full swing. So for now, I think we can forgive them, but uh, we believe that whatever they are, if they really want to get everybody along, they should begin uh, to send a few of them out for us to know uh, that they have something different from the previous years and they are ready to deal with our problems head on. Right. These two, these two have one thing in common, which is that they have both served the country, um, both as vice presidents and uh, for Mr. Dramani Mahama as president also. So um, there's going to be a play up of who has done what during their tenure. And we've already seen Dr. Balmia playing along those lines. He, for example, is asking or throwing a challenge to former President Muhammad to tell us what ideas he came up with when he was vice president. He also talks about the fact that um, the, the president doesn't understand um, some of the policies he's touting now, and he's speaking as though he didn't have an opportunity to serve as during the build-up, Doc, just a, a minute. During the build-up to the elections for the flag bearer of the NPP, uh, there were those who came strongly at Dr. Baumia, saying that his influence in, in this particular government and what we are seeing currently with our economy will affect him badly. Do you think that he playing up this card is a shot in his own foot? Oh, seriously speaking, uh, whatever the are going to He's just opening himself up for all manner of um, attacks and all that. But uh, if you look at it from the other perspective, you can also uh, grant that, that what you expect him to say. If his opening is coming out strongly in, uh, in terms of ideas and all that, he also must counter. But in all these things, what we do is that in campaign, you come out with message that will really stand the test of time. Uh, you can uh, play propaganda, uh, you can, uh, you know, do all manner of things. 
at the end of the day, you have to keep in mind that the people you are dealing with are the enemy. So uh, that will usher us into another realm, the realm of records. Remember that uh, politics is contest of ideas and referendum of your work. So you see people are now calling for ideas. Come out with your ideas that you have about the problems and solutions of this country. And then people are also calling for what? The record. Mm. If you listen to the vice president, all that is saying point to the fact that tell us what you did when you were in office. So records will come up for discussion. And I believe that that will begin uh, to usher a campaign to its full thing. Uh, I hope and pray uh, that they will move along this line and instead of their sticking to what uh, swipe and then Karataka make. We don't want that. We want real issues discussed. So I, I would propose that, uh, look, we should, the media should be able to create a platform where there will be what? A live debate on the issue. And let's see who is who. And then that will also give citizens the opportunity to interrogate the issues, assess the issues, and at the end of the day, make informed judgment about what is. I appreciate your time here this morning, Dr. Kwame Asasan. He is a political scientist at the University of Ghana. Uh, we'll stay in touch with you as the campaign heats up. But let me go back to Samuel Imbura, uh, who is with the vice president's team. They're on a thank you tour uh, in parts of uh, the northern sector of the country. Hello, Imbura. If you can hear me now, um, just let us know where you are and what the vice president's itinerary is today. Good morning, Ferris. I'm with you live from YNB, specifically the Yana Palace, where the Vice President and his team are paying a courtesy call on him. This was actually started yesterday in his native region. That is the Sosif region where he has a Momo camp for them. These are his Hamas today with a mammoth crowd um, in family to, to address them. And that's where some of these teachers of uh, criticizing the former president uh, 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 I mean, policy and also talking about what he intends to do if he is given the mandate. Uh, he has uh, been raised in the fact that he has his own half to cut. If he's given the opportunity, he wants to turn around the economy. He has new ideas and that that is to ignore the empty promises by John Mahama and then rather concentrate um, on him because he has the track record. Even as vice president, he has contributed his ideas Towards the development of the Akupolo government. But the situation is not the same with John Mahama even at the time. He was the vice uh, president. So he's really challenging him to produce a single idea that he supported uh, the president under the uh, NDC government. So uh, today, um, he will talk to or uh, pay a call on the Yana, Akumatari uh, Mahama, the second. And subsequently, he would uh, continue the, the talk to uh, similar consequences, it's not quite far from here. Similar consequences are identified by the defense minister, Dominic Nita, who can lead to war. And then the other consequence is uh, the MP is um, uh, Farouk Ali Mahama, the son of the former uh, vice president of the public. Uh, so um, he's been uh, warmly welcome here at the Yana Palace, and they are currently uh, following the palace procedure. And he's been um, accompanied by the national chairman of the MPP. Uh, civil against to his team. Uh, we have Sam Ponsini, who is representing all the chairmen across the country of the MPP. We also have the big wigs uh, okay. in the MPP. The Northern MPP members are also uh, fully supporting him. Uh, yesterday, we had the majority leader of the state being part of this. So, right now, we understand this is equally important activity they have to live as a host of other come. So, today, the itinerary is actually packed. Uh, after Dama move, you heard towards the surveillance region, where he would uh, be addressing the people in the Savannah region. The Savannah region is the home region of John Romani Bahama, and the, the supporters are patiently waiting for uh, him over there. So I must say, um, the tour so far has been successful, but one thing that has been unique has to do with the fact that throughout the tour, he has been using um, a bus to, uh, I mean, convey his thing, unlike we know in Ghana, the political rallies, we have um, the V8 cars uh, moving around uh, in longer fields and all that. But he is currently using the bus that you are seeing on the right to um, move around with his team. The media also is in the same bus uh, with him there. So 
uh, he said he wants to cut down expenditure um, in terms of, um, I mean, his movement and his campaign, and that would reflect uh, in his campaign. So at the moment, um, Bennett, uh, we are yet to hear from the Yal now what better he has for Dr. Mahmoud Baumia uh, for presenting himself and thanking the people of the Northern region for uh, giving him the support he needs. The MPC. Yesterday, we already had the blessing of the um, the uh, team or the overall um, the, uh, the, the overlord of the Mapuru uh, Kingdom. That is his home to him. Uh, he also confessed to him a chieftaincy title, a non discriminatory title. That is the title they have given him. Yeah, it's a non discriminatory title. So we are waiting to hear from the Yana what he has to say and then we we'll move to uh, the Africa. Right, Samuel, we'll leave it here for, for now. That's Samuel Mbura, who is traveling uh, with the vice president team. He's embarking on a thank you tour after being elected as flag bearer of the governing New Patriotic Party. Let's now touch base with uh, the, the team of former President John Dramani Mahama. My colleague Nanaya Jima is also monitoring the events closely and uh, he has live details for us. Uh, hello, Nanaya. Where is the, uh, is the former president now? And um, what does it look like today for him in terms of the people he's meeting and the agenda? This morning, the John Mahama campaign team moved from the Puno East region to the Hapa region and immediately campaigning all the um, tour of the region have commenced. It is the wrap of the first phase of the Building Ghana um, tour of John Dramani Mahama. Uh, on this tour, what he's doing is that he's listening to the people and that will feed into the manifesto of the National Democratic Congress for the 2024 election. Um, just as he has been doing everywhere he goes, he needs some, um, some stakeholders to take their challenges. And the first place that today he visited is the St. Joseph um, College of Education at Beijing. And presently, he is engaging with students and staff of the College of Education. Um, opening this um, meeting was a statement from the SRC president of the school, and he tabled some concerns before the John Mahama um, team. And what he is saying is that the school is challenged when it comes to infrastructure. There is infrastructure, infrastructure deficit here in the school, and he wants John Mahama um, to take note of that and, if possible, include that in the, in the party's manifesto, how the party is going to solve this challenge when voted um, for in the next election. And also, he also um, raised concerns about the teacher line center examination that has been prominent on the stall. What he said is that it is not fair for teachers after the four years training in the colleges of education to stick for another exam before they qualify for a license as a teacher. And in response, John Mahama said already there has been a promise to cancel the examination and replace it with something or replace it to another um, may probably replace it with an interview or another form of um, means that will be used to assess these training college students or these um, training teachers to ensure that they are able to be granted the license that they require to practice as teachers. And from here, the John Muhammad team moved to the Bethlehem town itself to engage with the people there. There will be a town hall meeting where various stakeholders, economic groupings, will be put together and their concerns will also be taken by the John Mahama team. And John Mahama will also get the opportunity to address them and assure them that the next NDC government will ensure that um, the concerns are well, um, um, are well solved for the prosperity of the country. So basically, the team today will be touring various areas within the Ahafo, Ahafo region, and um, it takes a two-day tour to the Ahafo region. So let, let's now hear a bit of what the former president is saying to um, staff and students of the College of Education there. To borrow them money to buy the cocoa crop for the next season, 
and then when they ship the cocoa, they pay back the syndicated loan. When I was leaving in 2016, we went and took $1.8 billion to buy cocoa. This year, because of the economic crisis and because Cocoa Board is broke, they cannot raise even $800 million. And even as they are struggling to raise $800 million, they want to use 300 million Ghana cities to buy torchlights for farmers. That cannot be a priority at this time. And so you need a government that will prioritize things. One of the major problems you are facing, why infrastructure on your campuses is not going forward, is because government has borrowed money against the GET Fund. And so money that should have come into the GET Fund to pay contractors who are working on projects in your colleges and your secondary schools has been taken in advance through the seven-year Dache bond. So currently, the GET Fund has no money to pay contractors who are working on projects in your schools. And so what we're saying is that the Dache bond should be added to the debt restructuring to free up the money to come into the GET Fund again so that we can build hostels for you, we can build classrooms for you, we can build dining halls for you, we can build administration blocks for you, and put the infrastructure in place so that you can have a good learning experience in this college. Thank you for staying on News Desk with me, Bernice Abubedul, and so away from politics. Drivers and commuters plying the Accra Tamamotoway are asking relevant authorities to fix crash barriers on that stretch. They say the absence of these barriers threaten their lives because they may fall in the drains, obviously, while navigating the numerous potholes around these uh, drains. Rejoice, Semefa Besu Hasmo. To the untrained eye, it is a normal day on the Accra Tema motorway. For months, the road has been deteriorating with some speed. The speed limit on this stretch reached 90 kilometers per hour, but with the iron rods popping out in gapping holes on what was once gone as a spread road, driving at 90 kilometers could be suicidal. Drivers have to drive at a tortoise pace in order to navigate the dangerous potholes. Apart from the dangers posed by these dangerous potholes, these drivers have other challenges to deal with on the road. A number of the bridges on the motorway are without their protective metal railings. And for drivers, it adds to their fear. Jerry Asamoah uses the motorway daily. He says the absence of the crash barriers adds to the already precarious situation they find themselves in whilst driving on the road. Also, we are very, very careful because of our because of the The open drains on the road are dangerous. Imagine someone driving at speed from the runabout and losing control. They need to fix them with some iron crash barriers. Alex also uses the motorway. He fears the absence of crash barriers increases the risk level on the stretch and wants the defect to be fixed. This is for crossing the hall because the cars will be passing there. Come to the motorway top. So that will decrease the accident. So I will assure that the cars will not fall. Such an issue. So uh, this is my five days today. We'll be here. Some pedestrians are also concerned about the danger. See whatever that is happening. We, we, are, we are not feeling comfortable, but we don't have any way out. Although government has plans to reconstruct the motorway, 
it is uncertain when the project will commence. In the meantime, drivers want the road to be rehabilitated and the crash barriers to be fixed in order to make the motorway reclaim its lost glory as Ghana's number one express road network and make driving on it safe again. Rejoice Simefak Pesu's report read to you. Let's now speak to Pell JC, who is uh, PR of the National Road Safety Authority. And uh, good morning for your time. And just straight to the point, we'd just like to know why this rather serious situation has been left unattended. All right, thank you very much. The name now is Pell Satekla. Oh, thank you, yeah. thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Apologies for that. All uh, right. Mind of the of the engineer, the motorway does not need a crash barrier because it is a, a highway which doesn't need any crash barrier as it was primarily done. But now that we all know and agree that the motorway has lost its usefulness, uh, we have we engaged them some time back and they have agreed to reclassify the motorway and do some development on it so that it will take back its lost gl glory. But with the primary design, there was no crash barrier uh, into it. So that is how it has been. But we all agree that it should be re reclassified and redesigned to fit its purpose. So that's what they are on now. that there were some works ongoing on the motorway, uh, which included dem um, demolishing the toll booths, fixing the, the street lights. This was supposed to be a part of it, right? Yes, madam. Okay, so why has, why has it stalled? Why, why haven't they been fixed? Um, I cannot stand here as a, a road safety PRO and give detailed reason why it has been stalled. But we all know it's bordered around budget. And so I think I may, I may have to contact them to give me detailed reason why they stopped uh, the development they started on the motorway. Right. So as, as it speaks now, the Road City Authority doesn't know or doesn't have any information to share with us about when or how long motorists would have to wait before these life-saving interventions are put in place. As I'm talking to you currently, we have engaged a multi-stakeholder uh, meeting uh, uh, in which your, your reporter is duly here to cover to now come and discuss or think about to discuss the pragmatic and practical way we can fix the street lights, including our traffic lights on our roads, including the motorway. And so all the experts are here from Ghana Highway Authority, Department of Urban Roads, all the concerned stakeholders, they are here. And so by the close of day, we will know the reasons why these streets like this rehabilitation and development has been solved and the way forward. Okay. And so by close of day, we'll help this. We've invited their directors. They are here to explain to us into detail. Possibly, possibly my final question to you. Does it need to take a program like this before the National Sa Road Safety Authority, which we depend on, okay, we the people uh, believe that in, in the scheme of things, you are our advocate. You are the National Road Safety Authority. You have been given, um, you have been given a mandate to ensure that our roads are safe. Should it our take... Man, should should it take... Our mandate is where somebody's mandate... I appreciate that. I appreciate that. My question, yeah. my question is, should it take a meeting or an event like this before you get answers to these very pressing, urgent questions about mm -hmm. why this has not been done? Yeah, sometimes when you contact them, they may not give you all the details. The last time we contacted them, they said budgetary constraints. We now need the details. And so 
uh, it's prudent we do it this way so that uh, they are presentations they will give us. Our discussions that will go on will give us detailed information of what is happening. There are various ways to do it, but this is one of the pragmatic ways we know we've been getting information from them, constant engagement with them. But today we are doing it, we are making it a national discord. That's why we even invited the press to take it directly. And so we've always been engaging them, we've been going one on one, but this time we're making it a national discord. That's why. The, the media has even been invited. Right, so as we speak now, until that discourse ends, we are unable to get real that, that, timelines to when uh, motorists will get some relief using the roads. Getting to the end of the year, we will not leave any stone on turn for the appropriate agencies to do what they are supposed to do to curb crashes on our roads or to reduce its occurrence. And so after this, we are going to sit with them one on one Press them or um, make them adhere to all the standards and the mandates that they are supposed to adhere to. And so, shortly, you will see changes. We, we, we were on Department of Urban Rules, and then they came to us privately that they've uh, been able to gather some funds to repair the traffic site. They started and they stopped. We went to them, and the same story. So, today, we'll get to know why the reasons they stopped affecting the non fashion traffic lights. And so you get to know by close of day. This is one of our strategies. All right. And, and, and just as a reminder also, uh, the railings that will protect people's vehicles from falling into the drains also need to, uh, to be fixed. Thank you for your time. Pearl Satakla is PRO of the National Road Safety Authority. Um, she's not able to give us any concrete timelines to when this issue will be resolved and um, especially for those of you who use that route every day you'd have to endure this for a while um, but um, we we hope that the the authorities and those responsible would give the needed attention this deserves the longer we wait um, we can never tell the lives that are at risk uh, of of getting snuffed out as a result of this well away from that it's been five years since a trailer run over five school girls at a Girls, Eva, Vivian, Abigail, Emanuela, and Lydia were sent on an errand by their school teacher during break time. As they waited on the pavement to cross the road to fetch their teacher's items, a trailer ran over them, crashing and killing them instantly. Our children went to school, and the only news we got was that a trailer had crashed them to death. It's been five years since the incident. But father of the deceased girls, Yawasari, says he's still traumatized by the incident, especially because no one appears to be interested in helping him get justice. After that, you know, you two one amobia, a woman in Moabia, your co education director, or see uncle DC or a co DC or see a medication director. After their burial, all efforts to seek justice education have proven futile. I have lost hope. Both the car owner and the driver are nowhere to be found. The car was moved from where the incident happened after about a week, with no traces of the perpetrators. He joined a group of people who have been victims of road accidents at an event to vent his pain about not receiving justice. The event organized by Accident Victim Support Ghana and NGO sought to raise 10 million Ghana cities to support other road crash victims. I couldn't do anything. I was just bedridden. I couldn't move around, but with the support of the wheelchair, it gave me relief. My dad is relieved. He's not supposed to. He doesn't carry me around anymore. I go about, I come 
come out with the wheelchair and move around freely. I thank accident victim support for the support they've given me. I'm very grateful. And I want to appeal for to, to everyone to help support. Support the activity support team foundation that they should support in any way they can. Founder of Accident Victim Support Ghana, Reverend Cyril Crab, asks for support to help ease the pain of survivors and their families. We all have to come to the table, find solutions, and part of the solution is to address it financially. You've heard the stories yourself. You can see how the victims are in a dire need of financial support. And so we want people to personalize it, personalize the crash, personalize the plight of the victims, personalize the problem that we are facing in the country, the crashes that it can happen to you. So if you have the opportunity, what will you do? You have to support. People will repair their cars, but how about repairing the human beings? How about making sure that somebody who never paid to be in such a position now finds in him or herself there, the driver could be free, but what about the, the victim? And as we approach uh, the Christmas season, just a quick reminder for all of us to stay safe on the roads, don't drink and drive. Remember that pedestrians are also road users and be patient with them if you are a driver. Let's do some health-related stories now. Um, advocates are asking government to include neonatal health care in the National Health Insurance Scheme. According to them, a child's first benefit from the state is the ability to live when they are born before uh, the 40 weeks gestation period. Well, and denying them this could lead to their death. Currently um, documented as one of the leading causes of death among newborns, the advocates want government to increase funding for neonatal care as a means of ending preventable deaths of newborns and children under five years. And this is a quest to achieve the SDG target 3.2 by the end of 2023. Hanaudami has more in the following report. <laughs> Mothers of preterm babies often have to stay in hospitals for as long as their babies receive care. This affects their finances and general well-being. Some are thrown into a state of despair, confusion and guilt. Olivia Sakwa has been at the Greater Accra Regional Hospital for the past three weeks waiting for her third child born at 32 weeks to be discharged the financial burden she says is draining reason why governmental support is needed if you the mother you've been discharged it means you have no bed to sleep on so you have to sit till daybreak so you can take care of your baby as well and aside that buying drugs going for labs it also stressed us. So actually, if the government can provide beds for mothers being taken care of premature babies. Aside that, some mothers continue to live in denial about the situation of the babies. But Gloria Abaka, who delivered at 33 weeks, encourages her fellow mothers to give their best love to the children during these moments as that aids the growth of their babies. So the hospital may catch or say a baby or baby sana or so I realize that when we love our children when they are in this situation they come out faster than we thought. An NGO, African Foundation for Premature Babies and Neonatal Care, occasionally supports these mothers through diverse means to alleviate their plight. Selena Bintum has been leading this cause. The cost of care in the NICU is expensive. The NHIS covers very little portion probably less than 10 percent and for the amount that it covers it does not extend to essential part of care like medication that is expensive that the baby needs to survive and so it is not an excuse for a Ghanaian a baby who is born Ghanaian at that age to be to die even if it's just one baby dying every year because of this it is still not fair and we can do more 
Stambeck Investment Management Services, which assured of continuous support for the mothers, also promised to be a voice so government can respond urgently by increasing investment in neonatal care. Desmond Bredu is head of client coverage. For us, we believe in sustainability, so we are not just looking at just a one-time thing, but how can we partner other institutions, how can we echo the message, because that's where we can get to have more people come on board. From the Great Accra Regional Hospital, I am Hannah Odame for Joy News. You're watching News Desk with me, Bernice Abube Dulansa. Business news is up next Tuesday. for an exhilarating experience at the main fair of the 2023 Ecobank Joy News Habitat Fair. Join us at the Accra International Conference Center from Thursday, November 23rd to Sunday, November 26th, 2023. Doors will be open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. each day to welcome you. This year, we are diving into the theme of home ownership, exploring the nuances between affordability, comfort, and luxury. Whether you're embarking on your home ownership journey or looking for upgrades, this fair is your destination for all things housing. Encounter a comprehensive assembly of stakeholders from Ghana's housing and construction sectors. Engage the experts across the spectrum of home creation and enhancement. The Ecobank Joy News Habitat Fair is in partnership with Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank, and powered by the Planned City Extension Project from Cities and Habitats, Rent to Own, and sponsored by Elegant Homes and General Constructions Limited, where quality meets value. Global Lighting, your solution to quality lighting. Syntex Tank, Air Strong, Air Tough, Springfield Estates, where dreams are built. Virtual Security, Complete Security Solution, DBS, your roof experts. Virtual InfoSec Africa, Security Solutions by Design. Alphabet City, the ABC of Home Sweet Home. St. Gobain Weber, Jiprock, Prorock, Placo, Isover. Making the world a better home. Clifton Homes, beautiful homes, wise investments. The Kissington Heights, Airport City, Kumasi, by HDG Homes Limited. Oh, A nation that honors its heroes is worth dying for. After months of rigorous contests for recognition in the regions and districts, the maiden edition of the Ghana Health Service Excellence Awards 2023. The grand finale comes off at the Grand Arena, Accra International Conference Center. Join us, celebrate, and honor our hardworking health professionals. Date, November 29, 2023. Our special guest of honor, Her Excellency, Mrs. Rebecca Akufuado, First Lady, Republic of Ghana. From 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., there will be an exhibition, free health screening, blood donation, and public lectures. 6 p.m., arrival in style, and at 7 p.m., the main awards event begins. For sponsorship, contact 0244-125-314 or 0543- 726406 Ghana Health Service Excellence Awards celebrating our heroes our lifeline Driving a taxi in Accra is like watching DSTV The drama in the Uber Biwa Last time my passenger cried in my car sir Hey she be watching her papa DSTV there it go over you another one my child gets so many gifts, and that definitely includes the best of Christmas cartoons. Plus, it keeps her occupied whilst I get things done. We watch the Premier League on Super Sports, like we are in a stadium. Oh, no! oh, no! oh, no! oh, no! That was 
was not an offside. Rashford was in an offside position. But he wasn't interfering with play. And Bruno score. This Christmas, dear, entertainment galore on DSTV. The content just go over you. Dial star 759 hash to reconnect or stay connected now. And it's been given to you. Man can't do it. Man can't do it. Man can't do it. Ha! Are you good? Thanks for staying and in business, you cannot depend on your children. Take steps to join SNIT to help yourself when old. That's the call on, for workers within the informal space. As the Director General of SNIT, Dr. John Ofuri Tinkrang, urges the self-employed to take advantage of digitalization to join the scheme and contribute comfortably. He spoke during a sensitization walk with the Senior Staff Association members of SNIT. Precious Semevo has more. We are going out there to convince people, workers of Ghana, who actually are the ones who move this economy, the people who are self-employed, to let them know that SNIT is there for them, that all the benefits that are available to people who work in offices, people who are working for government, all of those benefits are also equally uh, accessible to any worker in Ghana who helps to contribute to this economy. Survival of informal workers during their old age with no strength to earn an income remains a concern for workers, especially in the informal sector. The Director General of Senate, Dr. John Oferitin Krein, joined the Senior Staff Association on a sensitization drive on the streets of Sunyai to educate the self-employed workers on the scheme's benefits. He said parents cannot continue to depend on their children and urged them to take advantage of digitalization to save towards the future. They are the ones who make this economy move and they do not have any form of pension other than probably putting their faith in their children. We know that times have changed. You cannot depend on your children. They may be willing to be helping you, but even their salaries that they may be earning may not be even enough for them and their nuclear families. And that is why SNET has come out and with the help of uh, new, the digitalization agenda that has taken a, a storm in this country, with the Ghana card, with the ability to remit monies electronically through Momo e-levy free, we are now able to bring our services to the doorstep of all self-employed persons in this country. The mission is that in the very near future, when you ask people who have gone on pension and you ask them, what were you doing in your active years, you would hear that I was a hairdresser, I was a caterer, I was a mason, I was a plumber, and many more. The Senior Staff Association President, Edward Osubaini, explained how flexible it is to enroll on the scheme. We even have um, what we call seat, that is self-employed, uh, drive. In every office we have uh, representatives that goes up and down and then make sure that they remind people to come and do their payments. You simply have to go to any SNIT office and then with your Ghana card you just let them know the job you are doing and how much you are capable of paying. And then they will do the calculation for you and then they will let you know how much you are supposed to pay. And then you can even be in your home and do the payment via Momo. So, or you can also decide to come to the, our office and then do, make the payment. So it's very, very flexible for you to really even pay now. Precious summer for joy business, Sunyai. And leading job recruiting firm Jobberman Ghana through its MFIT project plans to place over 60 young women in tech roles in the country, according to the chief executive, Hilda Nimotieku. The initiative is geared towards empowering more women to venture into the technological space. She was speaking at a diversity and inclusion roundtable event by Jobberman Ghana. Diversity and Inclusion Roundtable event by Jobberman Ghana and GIZ Ghana forms part of activities under the MFIT project which aims at equipping women with soft skills to make them employable. In an interview, Chief Executive of Jobberman Ghana, Hilda Nimotieku, said the company plans to place over 60 women in tech roles to bridge the gender gap in the industry. We realized that there was a gap when it comes to the tech sector and as a 
uh, an HR and recruitment firm, when we are recruiting for like tech roles, we find out that it's 80 percent, sometimes as high as um, high as 80 percent of the jobs were uh, men who were taking part in the job. So we wanted to create opportunity and bridge the gap where we are able to place. And we realized it's not that the women are not qualified. Some of them are qualified, but they were just not getting the job. So GID was happy to help us to be able to put this program together. Um, we were, like I mentioned earlier, we had a 1,840 applicants who were part of this project, who applied for this project. Unfortunately, the project funding could only um, have 100 people in the training. So it was a tough trying to sift through, but we were able to place 100 of them in a soft skill training like you have seen this morning, talk about their testimony of what they learned from the training. And from now till March 2024, we are engaging employers to accept these women into job. I'm saying that, listen, if we can place the 100, let's do it. I mean, yes, the project is only funding 60, but why not? If we can able to put more than the people that the project is finding into jobs, this is our field. This is what we do. So we are requesting for employers who have jobs in the tech space to bring their jobs so, so we can place 100 women and more. And at least, like, we have 1,007 more. So if we want to do more training and more placement, we can always fall back to those people. Guest speaker. And that's how we end this edition of News Desk. I'm grateful you made time to join me. I'm Bernice Abubeidulansa. I'll be back at midday with the news. Thanks for your company.